So I had a few questions about uh, how I'm going to do my boost controller. So right here, I've got two examples. These are both out of an Audi, uh, more specifically a Volkswagen, um, but they're the Audi base kind of boost controllers and vacuum controllers that they use on diesel cars and other things like that. What I did is I went ahead and pulled these out and I took this one apart and we're going to play around with them. I'll show you really quick essentially what's inside of them. So you can just pull off the cap. There's this little metal ring that I already went through and pulled off. And inside, there's essentially a red gasket and a long metal sleeve. Now, the key thing with these is this metal sleeve has these holes drilled in it all the way throughout the base. Those holes in the base really make the difference because that's what allows air to come out. The idea behind this is if I put this in there, if I put air through here, this will push up, allow air to come out through this center hole. The red would sit on there, but essentially it lifts up like that with the red stain in. Allows it to come out and flow out through this bigger tube right there. And that's all it's doing, is it's controlling that there. So if I put that in there, I essentially put this on. If it's the valve is not doing anything, if I blow hard enough, all that air will go through. So, And so you can kind of... I'll let you hear it, but you can hear it go through that way. If I try and suck in, it won't allow it to go through. It's kind of like a one-way valve almost in that regard. And the reason why is just because of that cylinder in there. If this is deep enough in there, it seals it up and the air does not flow through. And that's how it's designed. Okay? So that's all it's doing. Now the reason why this is important is how the valve behaves with it. So the whole purpose of this valve then is to go ahead and kind of keep that air exactly how it is. So this is what happens. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to change. What I did is I took just kind of a normal uh, Bosch injector. I just simply cleared it all off. So in this case, you can see right here, that's just the inside of a Bosch injector. I just clipped the outside of it and made that work. So then that way I can slide it in. I've got an ability. These are normally five volts, but since this is you know, I literally have a spare one of these. Here's the good one I'm going to use. Uh, I just took this one apart for fun. So, it was cheap. In that case, I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you how this behaves. So I'll grab the GoPro camera, multitask like crazy. So I'm going to pull this little red cylinder out just a hair. And what we're really looking to do is this one is positive. And that one is negative. So as soon as I take it and I tap it, watch that little red cylinder. You see how that sucked in all of a sudden? And what it's doing is it's closing. So right then and there, that would be the boost valve. As soon as it gets a signal, as soon as it gets that ground, it's going to pop it closed and try and let less air flow into the wastegate. And when that happens under boost, that allows you to increase the amount of boost because the wastegate isn't getting the pressure to open it. That's all it does. You're limiting, you cut off the flow of air that goes to the wastegate and allows it to go that route. Now let's take a look at a bleed valve. That's another style. And so I'll take you over to the other side of the car and I'll show you what I've been doing for a couple of days. And it's not exactly the best way to go, but it was fun. It was just playing around. All right, so I'm over here on the other side of the car. You'll notice down there, here is my wastegate. I've got a line that comes up, just kind of U-turns and connects to a T and then this T goes all the way back there. What I've done though, and this is really cheap, is I've just taken a, this is an old garden sprinkler kind of drip system, and I took off the cap and I just plugged it in the hole. It's still a really tiny hole. I'll go ahead and set this down. What you'll see here though, is if I pull this out, this is just a bleed valve. So all it's doing is it's letting the size of this hole bleed off air from that pressure line, so there's not enough pressure to open the wastegate. That's all I'm doing. Now, this is a very manual bleed valve. You're basically setting a set flow. If this were to fall out, fail, or anything like that, I'm going to have a world of hurt because my wastegate then goes to produce as much pressure as it can. Very bad. That one, however, is more of a fail-safe style. If it starts to basically not get a good signal, if the, you know, the mechanism fails, it's a fail-safe. What happens is it goes right back to normal wastegate. If a bleed valve fails, you get failed nightmare, essentially. It's going to go as high as it can. It's going to overspin your turbo, most likely, 
or over boost your engine and blow it up. So that's why a lot of people don't like bleed valves because the fail safety on them is fail catastrophe. If something goes wrong, it's the worst kind of wrong. Whereas this, well, of course you can use software to say boost cut, but or this, if something goes wrong, it fails back to wastegate. So not a big issue, which I'm totally okay with. So I think it's about time I go ahead and wire that up and get that in there. As far as it goes on the car, I think for now, I'm probably just gonna bring it over, you mount it here on the side of the inner fender and then kind of wire it through that way or do something along those lines. So let's go ahead and get her started. One of the things I want to talk about is that third little nipple that's on there. What this does is it's actually a vent. So when you've closed off air to one section, you actually allow a little bit of controlled air into the other section. That's what that little tiny hole allows. My one fear is that the hole is too small. If that's the case, I'm going to prove this theory by running a T off of this main line and making sure that uh, it behaves as such. So if I get more fresh air in there, is the valve able to control and maintain a steady pressure once I go ahead and start bumping up the duty cycle? So if I get the duty cycle too high and uh, basically it's working but not working as well or going as high a boost as it needs, what that means is that this bleed kind of vent right here is not big enough. So that's my one worry. I'm not too worried about that because it's an easy fix. I either add a T out here on this main line that will do some of the venting and still allow most of the venting to happen through here or something along those lines. Let's go have some fun. Boost control now wired. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. All right, what I feared happened, that bleed valve wasn't big enough. So I need to go in there and look at it. Okay, there we go. Test drive time. For my results, the red line is actually my KPA. So you'll see there it jumps up, has a little peak, and then drops off as I'm pointing to this red line. This is on just normal wastegate. Over here is when I started using the boost controller. It goes up, it levels off, and it stays fairly flat. The problem is, is I was at pretty much 90% duty cycle throughout the whole time. Uh, so I went through, I added that bleed valve as you saw earlier, those two screenshots right there for my first drives. The second drive I started getting it up there. Um, I started giving it a little too much boost and actually started hitting boost cut. But yeah, I'm uh, going through and uh, getting everything worked out. It's getting fine tuned and I'm very happy with how it's working. I now have a full boost controller and it drives great. I'm loving it. I'm, uh, I'm sitting here around 8 PSI right now. I'm probably going to bump it up to 9 to 10 here in the next day or two, but uh, I'm quite loving it. It's holding a very solid boost. It doesn't just peak and drop. It sits there and peaks and holds, which is exactly what I was looking for. Thank you guys for hanging in there. By the way, I uh, went ahead and started an Instagram account, so if you're ever curious, look in the description. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.